What are we talking about today on Robot Show? Today on the Robot Show, we're going to be talking about Hardcore Henry and 10 Cloverfield Lane. And Bark Mepatov. And Bark Mepatov. Tamar Bark Mepatov. Today's episode is sponsored by Audible.com. Uh, if you guys don't know about Audible, it is a book listening service. You can listen to some books and periodicals. They have over like 180,000 things that you can listen to. It's pretty insane. And right now, if you have never used Audible before, you can get a free 30-day trial when you go to audible.com slash comic book girl. It's in the description below. Get your free book. Get your free book, girl. Get or your magazine. Free book. Get your free book. Do they have Ass Parade magazine? Uh, they might. Go check it out. Yeah, I just downloaded Dan Simmons' Summer of Night. I did that. Oh. And I'm really excited about getting into that. I like to listen to it on my phone when I go on my walks because now the weather's really nice and I really need to get in shape. I've totally not been doing it. And so now I'm gonna go listen to my book while I'm walking. It's I'll really take you to scary. the gym. It's really scary. It's a scary book. I've read it before, but I wanted to listen to it because I've never listened to it before. And it's all about these kids. And there's this evil bell, the Borgia bell, that's like satanic or something that's in their school. And it's like causing all these sandworms. And like in the cornfields, they're like lamprey eels and they like eat people's faces off. And like there's like a fucking like priest who's like dead and he's got like, ah, come out of his face. So I, I just, I barely remember. Like I just remember those things and I want to remember what, like why those things happened. So. Well, I am. So yeah, check it out. Audible.com. It's super, super rad. Now back to the movie we were watching. Hardcore Henry! <laughs> Hardcore Henry is about a guy who wakes up. It's extreme! And he's like Robocop now, okay? Like is this totally. lady, this hot lady is screwing on his leg and his arm and she's like, ah, you've been in an accident. Like we made it's it a robot. blood and gory we made and action. robot! And then all this shit goes down. There's some fucking albino. Explosions. Fucking like this French fucking lame Woo! albino villain guy that I loved. And then like everything exploded. And then he followed everybody around. It's Magneto like powers. First person shooter. Yeah. And he had Mag... No, it was more like Jean Grey powers. A lot Whatever. of people died. Super violent. It was a lot of craziness. It was awesome. <laughs> yes. Come on. So what'd you think about it? Uh, well, it was a lot. <laughs> uh, you know, let me give you my background on watching crazy movies, okay? Because I like crazy adrenaline fuck fest movies. Uh, I have seen, I mean, it started with the Transporter series. Uh, then, you know, Jason Statham started doing the Crank stuff and I watched the Crank and Crank 2, which I really enjoyed. Uh, the Raid, I've seen The Raid. I have not seen The Raid 2. That's on my list of things to do in my life. So when Hardcore Henry came out, I was like, well, there's my next crazy fucking adrenaline movie to watch. And I don't even have adrenaline, and I loved it. Man, this, that, those, it's, whoa, that movie is crazy. This movie has a 51% on Rotten Tomatoes. What do you think about that? I'm not surprised to hear that at all because this movie is an experience and it's a really crazy adrenaline heightened experience that most people aren't really going to enjoy unless you're a crazy person like me who like for some reason I enjoy weird shit like that sometimes like every now and again. So I mean I can see that. It's definitely just GoPro the movie. You know, it's more of like, it's definitely more of a video game than an actual movie. It doesn't have a ton of plot. It had a story though, right? What was it, the story? But it does have a story. I mean, it does try to have a story, but it is definitely unapologetic about the fact that this is like a fucking weird gimmick that we're trying of just being first person the whole time. One pincher up. Yeah, one pincher up. I will say I really, I did love their French albino turtleneck telekinetic villain. Like it was like X-Men, like he was like an X-Men character. And so I was just like super stoked to see somebody who looked like an X-Men character. I thought he was a lot of fun. More weird telekinetic shit, man. Like I love telekinetic stuff and like scanners. Like I'm a big fan of scanners, like it, all that shit. Like mind powers, like it's cool. It's fucking cool. <laughs> How did this movie get made? Okay, so it's really interesting, the making of this movie. So the guy who directed this movie, he started out on YouTube making some... Oh, that's just like me. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> yes, just like you, Robot. Maybe someone make a movie about me. Yes, he uh, made some videos with his friend who was a parkour guy and strapped a GoPro on this guy and had him do some crazy stunts and stuff like that and like put it together and made like music videos that went viral and they got millions of hits. And so you have this director-producer from Russia. He did Night Watch, Day Watch, Wanted, and some other things. Thing that I can't What's his remember. Name? Uh, Timur Bakhmimba. Ma Your Russian is impeccable. T Timur Bakhmintov. 
Buck McMataff. Buck Buck McMataff. Um, yeah, so he ended up, he emailed that guy, Nate Schuler, and was like, hey, did you have you ever thought about making a full-length version of this as a movie? And Nate Schuler was like, that's a terrible idea. And then Bob McMataff was like, let's try it. And then he was like, cool. And then they did, and then this is the result. <laughs> and that's how this movie got made. And that's how this movie got made. Oh, maybe yes. Buck McMataff will contact me and make a movie. Maybe so. Anything could happen. Jolly good. Have you seen any other movies? I did recently see 10 Cloverfield Lane. It's probably out of theaters already, but check it out in your red box. What was it about? Okay. Uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane was about a girl. She's in a car accident and she wakes up and she's chained inside this creepy room. And it's John Goodman and he's got this bunker and she's in this bunker. And he keeps telling her about how this invasion happened, which may or may not have happened. And there's all this tension and suspense. Do you like it? Uh, yes, I really liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Cloverfield 1. So I went to go see Cloverfield 2, even though I knew it was going to be unrelated. It's just kind of like a new type of idea, which I like. I like that. I like the idea of taking the Cloverfield name and putting it on something else and starting kind of like a deal with it. What do you think about the characters in Cloverfield? Okay, so I would say, you know, Cloverfield, like, it's not like a must-see movie, but if you want to watch something that's really great, I would, like, check it out for fun. But the main reason to check it out is John Goodman. John Goodman is a fucking American treasure, okay? American and, like, treasure! That guy deserves fucking awards, okay? we Like, he didn't even get any Emmys for being Dan on Roseanne, for Christ's sake. Okay? What? It's an yes. outrage. It's a fucking outrage. Where and are the trophies? He carries this whole movie, okay? This movie would not be as good as it is without fucking John Goodman. Like, I fucking rest my hand on a Bible for that one. So, yeah. So check it out if you want to see some more awesome John Goodman being fucking awesome because that guy's awesome. John Goodman. Awesome! I want to see more of him and stuff. No! No, no! No! Don't open that door! They're going to get all the kills! Something's coming.